Okay, so that's his unique situation. But of course, the, the family unit is uh, of Asian descent and has, of course, the cultural roots that come with that. And, and, and sometimes there are issues that, you know, you might talk that would be more open or more, let's just deal with it up front, that I think are part of what our family is. Um, and I think be that as it may, regardless of the background, uh, every family has that. Yeah, and certainly there are some dynamics within the API community that add that extra layer in. But I would fathom to guess that other families of different backgrounds also face the same sort yeah. of challenges. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like I know that Asians and the African-American community and even Latino, Hispanic community deal with there's the lighter skin and the darker skin, you know, and so it's there, there are very similar dynamics. That's why with... Um, <laughs> hit the nail on the head, like with this uh, documentary or this conversation, the message is, you know, it's geared towards kind of inspiring Asian Americans to be prepared and know that it's an honor to be a caregiver. But really, this is something that, like I said earlier, the thread that makes us all a human being um, here is that, you know, we all come from somewhere. We all want to be seen and heard. Right. And one day yep. we're going to have to take care of someone or someone's going to have to take care of us. So what other challenges have you faced kind of it can be physical, emotional, spiritual, mm -hmm. professional? Uh, it, it ain't easy to fly coast to coast. Um, you know, getting that plane every, you know, I'm flying on a plane at least twice a week Rocking just a, to come home. A lot of miles. Uh, but at a certain point, you're like, heck, you know, grandpa and grandma probably had to get in buses yeah. and go uphill both ways. Yeah. At least that's what the yeah, story they yeah. tell. <laughs> and it's in the snow, right? Yeah, right. Um, so I'm hopping into a little tube. Yeah. I'm sitting down. They're bringing me, uh, you know, sodas yeah. and donuts. Uh, and <laughs> lots little, of donuts. Yeah, lots of donuts <laughs> and, 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 the, and these little sandwiches with meats inside of it and cheese. And, yeah. and, you know, and I get to maybe sleep for about 30 yeah. minutes. How tough is that? Yeah. Based upon where, I mean, our family, we were, we were refugees in Indonesia, so we were in a shack. My mom had me Google it recently. She goes, can you go into that? She had you Google see? shack? No, she, she goes, uh, she had me Google, um, not shack. The lamb shack? But, yeah, the, the lamb, lamb shack. shack. Yeah. Um, but this tiny little refugee camp yeah. um, in Indonesia, and right. I looked at a shack, and she was like, that shack with a bunch of holes thatched together, she said, that looked better than where we stayed. Mm -hmm. um, so... Here, now, it's like we're spoiled because we get on a plane and we're like, ah, oh, weather, tarmac for 20 minutes, ah, oh, you know, our internet, 4G, 3G, 4G yep. isn't working fast enough. So, so it's 10 hours door to door. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, nor am I going to, you know, say it's really horrible. Yeah. I'm just glad that I can do it. Mm. And it's, it's not easy, but heck... You know, there's a lot of things in life that aren't easy. Mm -hmm. You just got to decide whether you're ready for it and whether you're going to do it. And, and I, I, you know, I don't get in there and go, oh, God, here I go. No. Yeah. I get to be here yeah. and, and do what I can as part of the team, mm. the family team, yeah. right, to do something about it. And I am very grateful. Mm. I am very grateful that I have an organization that understands that and the wherewithal to do it. Not everybody would. Mm. So I'm... I'm Absolutely. Yeah. I believe that. You know, you're a friend and a colleague, journalist, brother from another mother, and it's so awesome to meet your father and to realize that you both have this cheery disposition. Him? Well, yeah. <laughs> He's giving me a lot of gum. He's saying he hi never, to the babies. <laughs> he never smiles. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying hi to the babies. He's like, pigeon, I love the pigeon. Hello, pigeon. I know. Yep. He and Did, you know, Was that a good imitation? <laughs> yeah, very good. Yep. But you gotta give me a piece of gum. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. Give me but, about another year. <laughs> but I, I can see mm -hmm. that just being around him, mm -hmm. you kind of become who you are. Mm -hmm. I've always known you as such like a, a super nice guy that I look up to. That's smart in business, and that's a great journalist, and that's authentic and real. And I see glimpses of you and your father, mm -hmm. and him seeing the world in this lens where one one can in your situation yep. can be like sucks why does this have to happen to yep. me why do i have to live in new york and he has to live here yeah look there are there are really tough days you know mm -hmm. it can be very emotional then there are some great days mm -hmm. and then there's days you just laugh yeah and then there's days that you know you, you you just hang out um i used to you know to try to express to other people when they'd ask you know mm -hmm. so what is it like going through this and i don't know it's been said before it's like watching your father die in front of you mm -hmm. 
because you know dementia and Alzheimer's is not none of these diseases are easy but I also believe you know as I've watched him sort of relearn everything because with Alzheimer's and with dementia it's like a, if life uh, memories are a stack of pancakes you know the, the pancakes on top are the first to go yeah the pancakes below yeah. stay right and so as the pancakes start to get eaten away I realize my dad's trying to still relearn and, and, and make these pancakes and mm -hmm. put them back on top. Wow. And so what's interesting about when somebody learns something is that it's brand new. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you talk to him and he's thinking about a donut yeah. or he's thinking about a pigeon. Hello, pigeon. Uh, or a Subway sandwich. Or a Subway <laughs> sandwich. Um, those are new to him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, did you taste that Subway sandwich? Mm -hmm. Did you that apple fritter? Yeah. Ooh, wee! <laughs> Hello, pigeon. Like that pigeon is every day brand new to him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, not every day. Yeah. yeah. But it's like it, you're learning through the eyes of a child, yeah. right? So he's re he's learning to live again. Yeah. Mm. And that within itself is instructive. Yeah, yeah, that's instructive because I think as we in the non-dementia space, we kind of build these stacks of pancakes and we think yeah. we got it. Yeah. Like, hi, how are you doing? I got my yeah. stack of pancakes. Yeah. Maybe we don't. Yeah. Maybe we should like get rid of some of those pancakes and share, and, and, and no, and, and remake them. And remake, yeah, new and relearn how to make yeah. them because the, the way he's relearning how to live is pretty interesting. I mean, I mm -hmm. find it very instructive mm -hmm. because it's, it, and I'll, I'll be, I'll take it to the next level. It's a lot like, do you are you in, are you enjoying everything? Are you smelling that? Are you hearing that? You know, mm -hmm. it's that sort yeah. of relearning what how cool it is uh, to live or, or, or to have certain experiences or access to certain experiences. Yeah. What are some other life lessons that you've learned from caregiving for your father so far? Oh, it's certainly an honor. Yeah, to be here, to be able to do it, uh, that he would find acceptance because it's certainly possible. He could say, what are you doing, Richard? Or who are you? Yeah. Uh, or he could be very uh, not positive. Yeah. Yet he's very positive. He's you know always glad to see me and mm. all of my siblings as well. Uh, he, despite the pancakes being yeah. taken away, <laughs> when we're sitting on that dining room table, it's just he's happy. Oh, so the yeah. simple things count for him. Yeah. So you know it could be so much worse. I mean so mm. I mean what I'm learning is you know be grateful for what I've had. Yeah. There's nothing miraculous yeah. about that realization. Yeah. But there is because. That you pay attention to the small things because mm -hmm. we think about accumulating and buying a bigger house and having a better job title, whatever it is. And you know, at the end of the day, yep. all that doesn't matter. Money, title, all that. So it's, I decided when my father had stomach cancer, it was my first job in Wausau, Wisconsin on air. Yeah. And um, I decided to come home and I quit and I took care of my father because the doctor said he had six months to live. He had stomach cancer. He died six months later. And that time I will never have that. Yeah, you and won't. there's a lot of closure that happened, mm -hmm. a lot of healing, mm -hmm. and he wasn't as positive as your father because he was in a stomach cancer, it's a different one situation. of the worst pain. Oh, but yeah. he was like, yeah. my parents wanted to be doctor, lawyer, engineer, right. and I became a failure in their eyes. I became a journalist. They didn't talk like that. I, my my parents, my dad, my mom does. Really? Yeah. yeah. With yeah, the my, hands? Yeah. Well, my mom is. Huh. Yeah, my mom is. Yeah. No, it's, they talk like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not with as much as the yeah. namaste hands, but you know, she's like, yeah. be doctor, lawyer, engineer. But you know, with right. us, we always like bowed to them. Like we crossed our arms, but she'd be like, "Be a doctor, lawyer, engineer." Yeah. And um, when I came home to take care of my dad, I didn't tell anyone, mm -hmm. and people were like, "Oh, you're, um, you know, you why did you quit? Are you a failure? It's mm -hmm. too cold in Wisconsin." And I just it was my own personal thing to go to. I didn't have to tell them. Um, and my dad, I you don't. Seeing, yeah, I remember seeing him in the hospital, and he said, "When are you going to be a doctor?" Yeah. You know, so I, that's some a learning curve that I had to take too. It's because, you know, to because a lot of times he would say things that were hurtful to me because of the pain. And, um, and so that's why I feel like the story of being ready to be able to kind of get your, all the ducks in order and hearing other people's stories and knowing that, you know what, you're not alone in your journey, that you're going through it. Richard Louie, NBC, MSNBC, anchor, whatever, you know, like that, that you are going through the same kind of pain and the yeah. triumphs as we have. So for me, it was like taking care of my dad, shoving morphine down his throat and rushing him to the hospital. Yeah. Those are emblazoned in my mind. It's tough. Are there times that you just get so tough for you that you just, 
you have to take a breather and how do you deal with that? Oh, you know, it, look, I'm, I'm sure things are going to change and will there'll be great days and bad days. I think one of the defining moments, at least for us, you know, because when I'm in town, I stay with him so that I can, you know, help change light bulbs. I can, I can see, you know, when help is needed, when it's not. Uh, and, you know, there's days where he can't get out of bed. Uh, there's days where he, you know, it's tough in, in, when he goes to do normal everyday things like using the restroom, you know, and you have to be there for those situations. And yeah, first, pretty. first couple yeah. times you're like, oh boy, whoo. Uh, and then you're like, I'm here to do this. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there are stories where it can, it can be very rough, but you're here to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like you get, get in there without emotion. No, you're there because just like, you know, when I was pooping out pennies, you know, there was somebody on the other <laughs> side making sure the penny was there. Yeah. yeah. It actually wasn't me. It was my sister who was pooping out pennies, but you know, you got the story. Uh, and so, yeah, there are, there are tough times. I expect more of them. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for them, mm. but I'm aware that it's going to happen. Mm. I'm going to, I'm, I'm very open in talking about it. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, I know it's not like you sit around and you're with friends and you want to talk about this all the time, but you know, it's, it's important to talk about and say it out loud. Yeah. Especially for people like us who are storytellers to tell your story. Um, can you talk about your dad's kind of, um, today we went on a little adventure, like to talk about the daily the sure. three things that he's able to do on his own, so to speak. He is absolutely driven by schedule. So he will get up at 8.30, 9 o'clock, the caregiver who comes to the home for two hours, three or four times a week, meets him. They go for his walk because he does walks every day to keep healthy. Uh, and on the way, always go to get uh, a Subway sandwich and then go to get a donut. It has to be an apple fritter or two. Um, and if there are people around, he'll add a couple bonus donuts in there. From there, depending on the day of the week, he might go to the supermarket to buy cookies. He loves oatmeal cookies. And he'll buy these big cartons of gum. And when he's walking down the street, uh, he if he's talking to, let's say he's with, with the two of us here. Oh, he's giving me 10 pieces already. Well, let's say the two of us are walking down. We got this really serious conversation going on. And he sees, oh, squirrel. Because what he'll do is if he sees like another person walking down the block, he's going to like whip that thing out. Like got the pack yes. of gum. And he's like, out of my way. I got a gum to be yes. given. Uh, and he'll do it no matter where he's at. You can try this. You can yeah. hold him back. Yeah. He's running straight through you. Yeah. Marcus Allen. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> now he's 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 gonna he's gonna get that gum delivered. Uh, and, and and when we were, for instance, today when we went smart and fine, we were getting the gum. Uh, there was a store manager saying, "Oh, there's the gum guy." <laughs> I said, "Is it because he normally buys it from you, or because he gives it to you?" He said, "He gives it to me." The store manager knows <laughs> yeah. him. Um, and the donut shop as well. It's the donut shop that he used to take us to because that donut shop's been there for at least half a century. Yeah. And we used to, he used to take us there when we were about yay high after swimming or after getting good grades mm -hmm. or, you know, and we get a softie yeah. or a donut. And that was the place. And so he remembers it. Mm -hmm. Subway sandwich is new. Yeah. Um, he just likes sandwiches. Mm -hmm. He's always like, it used to be tuna fish and mm -hmm. he still orders tuna fish sandwiches, by the way. Um, and so that's sort of his structure. Mm -hmm. And he always takes his naps at the same time. He's sleeping right now because he ate his lunch when we came back. Uh, the walks are very important to him. Mm -hmm. And having the caregiver that, that comes to, to be with him, it allows him to get out. And she, she keeps him at pace. It's somebody to be there with him. And we decided to stay here at this location because, you know, look, this is a typical San Francisco home. It's three levels, skinny stairs, you know. He's 82, yeah. mom's 81, knees aren't, you know, your best friend mm -hmm. uh, in, your, in your early 80s and 90s. So the decision was, do we get outside of the home so that he can do well? Because as the dementia increases in severity, he's forgetting that, oh, I, you know, I can't eat like an apple fritter every day. Yeah. And, but he does. So he gets chubbier, muscle sets mm. get flabbier. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's, that is part of it. Although he does go down to the YMCA for um, lessons once uh, a week. Mm -hmm.